It's a good afternoon to you. Welcome to this midday news, of course, here on point. With that, though, we're not going to go into the headlines. We do have the Auditor General, Kimi Makwetu, uh, going through some of the latest audit outcomes for local government for the 2018-2019 period. Uh, it is for that financial year. So let's cross live to that now, and we'll return right after that. In most instances, in some municipalities, they do not quite know even the physical location of some of these assets. And we think that there's a big need for the ability to manage assets to be ramped up because it is through those assets that they deliver services, but it is also through those assets that they will earn some additional income. Part of this, for example, is immovable assets in the form of buildings. If a municipality owns a particular building, but there's some crowd that uses it for other activities. But the municipality carries that asset in its books. It keeps the maintenance of the asset, but it doesn't enjoy the benefits coming out of that asset. And then the bigger one as well is the revenue management. I think we've seen how the write down of the revenue raised in municipalities has affected their ability to have access to cash. And we think that there are proactive steps that need to be taken to make sure that the preventative control discipline around revenue management is also uh, given priority. So a lot of these preventative controls, as I said, in order for them to, to, to find resonance in an institution, they require senior management. They require the accounting officer or the accounting authority. They require internal audit as well as the audit committee. But when we did an assessment, of the effectiveness of these levels of management within local government at a global level, we found that at the managerial and leadership level, the front line, there are some significant uh, weaknesses when it comes to the level of assurance that auditors get from that. So once that first layer is weak, then nothing that can be helped. Or municipal councils. So the slide on the <clears throat> is a reflection of the extent to which the controls at management level have been found to be weak in a number of areas. Hence, even financial statements in some municipalities get submitted to consultants, and then the consultants are expected to answer all the questions from the auditors as if the consultants had accountability for the activities of the institution. And we find there's a lot of this particular abdication of responsibility when staff in the institution is not able to <coughs> themselves. <coughs> and then, uh, I think I'm getting to the tail end of this. <coughs> and, 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 <coughs> and I think when we look at where to from here? Uh, we just thought we'll favor you with a little quote at the end in, in respect to what does this all add up to? <clears throat> and I guess we move from the premise that around all of us, I'm sure there are many people that would prefer not to really do any work for as long as they know that they are going to continue to get something, whether they get it via a contract whether they get it via employment, whether they are in the employ, but they are not really producing any of the stuff that is required of them. We know that in any system, in any society, we'll always find people who do not really want to do that work. <clears throat> but unfortunately, people like those always have a upper hand when in our system we lack a strong leadership. And I think the overall essence of these audit outcomes is that there's a lot that can be saved. There's a lot that uh, is sitting in the undesirable hands from a control and management point of view. But for as long as we do not exercise good and strong leadership <clears throat> in making sure that those people who, who really do not want to work shall not have an upper hand around here. And I think that is the key message that we would like to live with these audit outcomes to, to say that it is still within the powers of many of the people in the leadership of local government to effect the required changes because the amounts might look not that big 
but all economic activity and economic opportunities in our country are created and run from all these downs that we are reporting on. And we think that that's probably one of the key takeaways here to say that strong leadership will probably begin the journey of turning around what we often observe for the last 10 or 15 years. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot, AG. Before I go to the AG's guests, there was a clarification that you wanted from the DG. She'll do that after that, Deputy Minister, and then Menka Dimeng afterwards for your messages. Uh, thank you, Africa. Good morning. Um, I confirm that there will be 57 auditees subjected to the next phase of implementing the Public Audit Act as amended. 56 municipalities plus one entity, so that'll be 56, 57 uh, auditees. That's a significant ramp up from the nine that we dealt with in the previous financial year. Thank you. Uh, th thank you very much, Africa H. Deputy H. President of Salgan. Also to acknowledge the honorable members uh, uh, in parliament, uh, honorable Nyambi and Somio. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that the presentation from the AG has been quite comprehensive in depicting the current situation with regard to audit outcomes at the local government level. Um, so I'm not going to try and repeat the points that have been raised by the AG, but just to take uh, or rather to raise a few takeaway points, um, not, not in a comprehensive way because the AG has been quite comprehensive in his presentation. The first, I think, uh, is, is in the way in which the AG kind of analyzes in, in the title of the presentation some of the issues that are quite fundamental to what needs to be addressed and attended to. The first is a set of systemic issues that we need to resolve. So the reality and recognition of the fact that there are fiscal constraints, they do limit the extent to which um, local government is able to undertake its responsibility, suggests that in fact it is equally important for us to develop the requisite policy, institutional and financial tools to address those systemic constraints and limitations in local government. That notwithstanding, I think it's the twin message that says that it should not excuse the lapses that have been witnessed and observed by the AG and as presented today. And some of these lapses are indeed governance lapses and governance issues that emerge in the, and in the municipal environment in the country. And some of these are administrative um, and control issues addressing issues of management, administration, and control within the system. So the one level is a fundamentally political task about oversight and leadership with regards to what needs to happen. And that, to a large extent, is where the governance issues are located. But indeed, there are the administrative and management issues that also require attention in terms of the quality of people recruited into the system, accountability in the system, but also controls um, in the local government system. So I think for me, those are key takeaway points. The second point is a matter that uh, I should say, AG, we have been pondering and debating in COCTA together with our colleagues in Treasury which is the fact that we've invested significantly in assets in the country to develop infrastructure and provide services to the people of this country. And local government is crucial to the provision of those services, whether it is electricity, water, sanitation, roads, stormwater, public parks, and so on. Local government is crucial in the provision of those services. So we celebrate in many ways as a country the extent to which we have reduced backlogs with regard to access to some of these services. But the reality is these services require repairs and maintenance. So we haven't matched the investments in infrastructure with our ability to, to maintain this infrastructure so that, so that it, it's able to, to reach its logical lifespan or at least the design lifespan of the infrastructure is not always realized because of uh, 
low levels of uh, repairs and maintenance. And I was saying that part of what we have been discussing and in fact have agreed as a department is that we need to ensure that a portion of the capital grants provided to local government, municipal, in, municipal infrastructure grant as an example, we need to apportion a percentage of that. You can't take away from the responsibility of the grant, which is to provide infrastructure, but can you at least take a percentage, up to 5, five to 8 percent of that, and say that this is dedicated to repairs and maintenance? In that way, you begin to address the problem that is being raised. Of course, it doesn't respond to the entire issue because this is the extent to which as government we're saying we, sh we should be able to utilize the grants that we provide to local government uh, to address issues of repairs and maintenance. But that doesn't absolve the municipalities themselves from assuming responsibility for budgeting for repairs and maintenance. Uh, so I thought it's an important issue that we, we shouldn't uh, lose sight of because it is a significant issue with regard to ensuring that uh, the lifespan of assets is actually maintained. I think there is no doubt that uh, in terms of the trends indicated by the Auditor General, we should be concerned and we should uh, uh, essentially roll up our sleeves and, and focus on the task. And the task at hand is to ensure, at hand is to ensure that we address these challenges. Part of what we discussed before the lockdown period with the Auditor General and the Minister of COCTA was to undertake a roadshow to all the provinces and by extension to all the municipalities in the country. But the roadshow shouldn't be a ceremonial roadshow, if I may. It shouldn't be a roadshow where we go and say, well, we're exercising oversight, are you doing your job, and so on. The idea of this roadshow is that we should be able to drill down to what is the root cause of the problem and how do we address it per district, per municipality, so that we can begin to ensure that these matters receive our attention. Because we can't continue saying, at least as national government and indeed including provincial governments, we can't continue saying we are concerned about the situation. We must say what action do we take working with the Office of the Auditor General, working with provincial government, working with the South African Local Government Association to ensure that these problems are addressed in a very systematic and structured way and we can progressively realize uh, the objectives of ensuring that uh, we achieve clean audits in the municipal environment. Thank you very much. Thanks, Deputy Minister Menka Diming. After that, uh, Honorable Somio and Honorable Nyambi online. Very much. Uh, let me start by greeting uh, to the Office of the Auditor General and the Deputy Auditor General as well, Deputy Minister, uh, Honourable Members Somio and Honourable Nyambi, uh, virtually connected. Uh, let me start on behalf of the South African Local Government Association, note and welcome the uh, uh, Municipal Finance Management Audit Outcomes for year 2018-2019. Uh, uh, which have just been released by the AG now. And uh, firstly, congratulate also the 20 municipalities that uh, have received clean audits and say possibly there is a light where all of us can learn because there are pockets of excellence, minor as they may be. But uh, AG, your report is deeply concerning. It uh, shows continuous regression uh, in terms of uh, the audit outcomes within the sector. It critically shows that there, is, there are serious setbacks towards achieving the vision that government had set itself of being a, a departmental and a developmental local government, which was built on pillars of clean governance and accountability. The audit findings clearly shows that there's a lack of accountability. We can't run away from that. And there's a lack of consequence management in uh, municipal leadership which we have to take responsibility and accountability for. And that is what our presence is about this morning, is to say we would want to be responsible as a local government sector, but as also the leadership of municipalities, to say that we would want to turn the situation around where accountability and a, a, a good governance and clean governance are re is realized at the local government sector. So this picture before us can only change if 
at a management level and at a leadership level, we are held accountable to ensure that we strengthen our resolve of extracting accountability using the existing levers provided in our legislation. I think the AG was very articulate that the legislation does provide clear-cut measures of what needs to be done and how we need to do them at municipal leadership level, but there's lack thereof. And I think we suggest as Salka that clear extracting of accountability with regard to that needs to be done. A consoling factor is that also as a National Executive Committee, we met on the 18th of June, Auditor General, after you have presented to us, we decided on... Not only to the nine that we have indicated, but all to all municipalities who have transgressed in terms of the relevant legislation to demand accountability. And as the NEC will monitor this on a quarterly basis and will also carry a skills audit to look clearly into the area of consultants which we have looked into. If a municipality has a, 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 a CFO, why do we still utilize and the, 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 the staff full of finance is fully complemented? Why do we still utilize a, a, a consultants? If not, what are the challenges those post positions are not filled and what could be do? And that assessment will then be able to give us a clear picture and an indication of what are the steps of building a capacity within municipalities where we think it may be needed. Also, this will go in, in, in to a full extent. We are done training on MPEX, but it does, from your report, indicates uh, that we may need to go back there again and be able to assist our councillors who sit in our municipal public audit accounts uh, 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 committees to assist them to be able to understand the roles and responsibilities, but also to be held accountable of the area that they were supposed to be. So it will be part of what uh, Bullet One was dealing with. Senior managers must also be subjected to professional bodies. In fact, it's a part we have started with also. If you are a chartered accountant, the psyche, what are we going to do, for example, uh, in terms of, assist, of requesting professional bodies in the field to assist us to oversee but also to all help us to oversee their members and also hold them accountable. I think that was the starting point, but a multidisciplinary audit steering committee consisting of SALGA, National Treasury and COCTA has been formed to already monitor this implementation, as I have said, in a, a, a quarter basis. And we are hopeful that the municipal audit response plans that will be developed, monitored, will also assist in the financial year that is kicking in uh, uh, today, actually, a, a, a new financial year. And we are hopeful that the results that will come as we will move to the 2020, I mean, 1920 audit will be better. The implementation of this steering committee is informed largely by Section 216 of the Constitution, which says we could also be able to withhold equitable share in order to address financial misconduct in municipalities. Much as it could be used as a last measure, but we need to be able to move towards that rim where the AG makes an example that in one municipality, it will be a disclaimer for eight years, and in year nine, we still have not done anything, even to an extent of forcing compliance and enforcing section 216 of the constitution. So we'd want the commit, as it do these reviews on a quarter basis, begin to say, is there a root and seriousness in a particular municipality or we'll have to look into discussions of how best could we release the funds to these municipalities while enforcing uh, 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 compliance. If we don't do that, the indication is that the deteriorating financial health status of municipalities will continue and this will put the difficulties to our communities who deservedly are supposed to be receiving services that is meant out uh, to come out of the funds uh, that are allocated. I think in short, AG, I could say that, that we are uh, willing and we would want to be partners in ensuring that we claim the sphere back, we claim accountability and good governance. As your report states that municipalities, as I quote, you render services and deliver goods to consumers with the expectation that they need to be uh, uh, paid back. However, there's a growing trend of established business and households 
that do not pay. But if you also look back into this, you realize that there is now consumer trust deficit because people feel we can't pay municipalities because they can't properly account. So if we don't fix this, we remain in a vicious settle. They receive the services. They are not really convinced on whether they have to pay for them. The deputy minister says we may not, we have done them, we have not maintaining them properly. So the, the, the cycle continues and, and the trust deficit, uh, uh, we experience it on a day to day. Until we hold hands and we become accountable and ensure that we run a sphere that is favorable and treat its communities better, we, we, we will struggle. And we are here to commit to that. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mayor. We'll connect to Honorable Somio, after that Honorable Nyambi. Chair, uh, Chair, the AG's presentation uh, in acknowledgement of his presence and the uh, Deputy Order General, uh, the Deputy Minister, um, the Chairperson of Salga, my colleague, Honorable Nyambi. Um, I, I think this morning we have been exposed into a very unfortunate uh, scenario uh, of how uh, in totality uh, how our municipalities, the very critical sphere of government, um, a government around the corner um, uh, where everything matters, um, where our communities, when they don't have water, uh, they would uh, cry and get closer to them. And they were exposed to how they uh, spend what they have. Uh, how they misspend what they have, uh, how they fail to observe um, regulatory environment in as far as the supply chain is concerned. And, and in detail, uh, the Auditor General has, has, has carried painfully uh, how the country's fiscal is exposed uh, at the local government level. Um, you, would, you would imagine um, just at this time, uh, when we're exposed um, to this pandemic, uh, when the Department of Water and Sanitation, uh, Human Settlements, had had to run around to procure uh, the services that would uh, at least assist our own communities uh, to have uh, water uh, as a primary source uh, and unfortunately, those municipalities who have been charged with that responsibility, how they have carried that task uh, with little observance uh, of ensuring that there is um, durable infrastructure uh, for such services. Um, you see, the Auditor General has outlined that uh, to us, and, and that exposure runs deep uh, to what do we have to do um, as the parliamentary uh, committee in this instance, where we would uh, worry for some time uh, when, when the Auditor General was exposed into an environment which was not so safe to audit uh, the, the books of various municipalities, were well, pleased this time around that, that at least uh, there is an indication uh, that uh, there has been less of that exposure uh, into risk uh, and therefore uh, the, the audit teams right around the country uh, could fulfill uh, their, uh, their, their role. Uh, we were at a very uh, displeasure when we had to meet a number of municipalities who were allegedly um, within um, uh, that uh, a kind of an activity. Uh, but let's appreciate that at least uh, there has been a sound observance of allowing uh, the Auditor General uh, to have a look into such books. What, what, what as well disturbs us um, uh, the most is that a number of municipalities would, uh, you see, not fail to spend too much uh, on the audit process and, and fail to ensure that when they procure services, when they deal with these uh, uh, management controls, uh, they would uh, ensure that the skills that are necessary uh, are in place. 
but but uh, at the tail end, when they had to account, they would engage um, a number of service providers as consultants to look into their books uh, and, and to present such to the general, something which uh, uh, I, I think should be discouraged uh, so much because there is no need for expense uh, at, that, at that stage uh, if uh, the requisite skill uh, is uh, somewhat uh, attained by municipalities uh, in various instances. I think we have to appreciate the fact that there are those municipalities who don't fail to do good uh, to observe such controls uh, as the Auditor General has outlined that, uh, that that is more critical uh, to ensure that you internalize such controls and uh, you ensure that uh, uh, they are finding part of your own systems uh, so that the breakage should not be by the fact that uh, one officer is not present, another officer is engaged, and therefore uh, such controls must be observed. If you have internalized them, if you have uh, found them within your own systems, uh, it's much better uh, to ensure that you run and rally uh, behind uh, behind such. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, a situation which is unbearable. When you find out that uh, where there is a sense of stability, both politically and administratively, there are better outcomes. And where there is instability, glaringly, uh, you would see that the outcomes uh, and the scrutiny uh, fails to derive at uh, the best uh, in as far as the outcomes are concerned. So, so it's a call to us, to both the local government and the provinces, uh, to take charge of the environment. The Auditor General has outlined how Lubombo has improved because uh, the, the Premier of the province committed himself uh, to assist that uh, uh, background. And, and uh, we, we call on the highest office uh, in these various provinces uh, to follow suit to ensure that at least they safeguard uh, the role of accountability, good governments, and, and uh, looking into the stable environment in as far as these municipalities uh, are concerned. As the committee, we are going to uh, find time with the Auditor General uh, to look into detail as to how can we at best uh, begin uh, to influence a trend uh, of both good governance and accountability uh, to uh, the local sphere of, uh, of government. We're pleased to hear from Salga that there's been a call uh, by them to ensure that uh, various leaders of uh, various municipalities uh, would be made to adhere to these uh, kinds of accountability uh, protocols uh, at all at all times. There is no way uh, that uh, the country uh, would have all these uh, spheres of government and insist that uh, the actual observance uh, of a, a key legal parameters, where they are talking about procurement, where they are talking about governance, where they are talking about the systems that pertain to uh, overall performance in the local government overall uh, must be observed at all times. We must all work together to ensure that these things uh, happen. We have hope that uh, uh, at least what the president has outlined in improving performance at local government level uh, as a strategic call uh, of looking into the district model would as well to work well to assist uh, in the environment of accountability. Uh, uh, th there's no need that uh, we should uh, run around even on the meager resources that we have. Let us ensure that we observe the best of models of accounting on such and be able to attain the best results uh, overall. So, so we really appreciate what the Auditor General uh, does and uh, the teams which are there and the limits in terms of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the current audit environment uh, to observe uh, the amendments in as far as the Public Audit Act, uh, so that uh, the numbers uh, which are sitting at a, a nine currently improved uh, to more than 50 would uh, have loved to see all municipalities be subjected uh, to such over time. So 
our discussions with the Auditor General uh, would uh, work around those uh, areas because if irregularities amount to uh, more than 30 billion in as far as the financial terms are concerned, and, and uh, we look into the better way of improving performance around such, we must increase our basis uh, to audit a, a number of such municipalities who continue to work towards irregularity uh, over time, looking into the record of accountability. Thank you very much, um, um, Auditor, Auditor General, uh, for the outcomes. Thanks, thanks, Chairperson. We'll take Honorable Nyambi and then we'll go to the questions we have received. Thanks, Chairperson. We have a few questions on the WhatsApp groups. I'll start with Claudia Milovic from Business Day, who has about three questions. What, the first one, what is the impact on municipalities if the audit outcomes continue to regress over the next few years, as has been seen consistently over the past few years? The second one from Claudia is... And what is the AG's view on the fact that the situation is not improving? What is the most crucial thing that has been that has to be done to fix the state of municipalities fin municipal finances? How do we get the right hands at the till? And is it possible to turn the situation around without extreme changes to the way both political office bearers and municipal officials act? Uh, we also have questions uh, from Kulekani Magubani from Fin24. To what extent, if any, have amendments to the Public Audit Act empowered the Office of the Auditor General to ensure accountability in cases of financial management standards failing? The third uh, question, set of question is from Trudy Dutweit from Sports Trader. Are there any known cases where action had been taken against the municipal officials who have been responsible for frequent irregularities in their financial statements? We also have a set of questions from Talia Holmes who's from News 24. Could you please share with us the municipality or the area where unfair procurement with inflated pricing took place? The second one from Talia. Will there be any sort of cap on spending on financial consult consultants for those municip municipalities that spend heavily on these service providers and yet saw no material improvements in their audit outcomes. What, are, what other solutions will be recommended to these municipalities for improving their financial performances? All right, let me, let me start with the first few questions from Claudia. <clears throat> There's one about the impact of outcomes if uh, municipalities regress, or rather if outcomes regress over the years, what will be the impact on the municipality? I think if you look at the combination of uh, what we often promote, and that is to deploy internal controls in a financial management environment. That discipline of 
having proper financial controls helps the municipality prepare for rainy days as well. Because when they've got their hand around what money goes for what project, what sort of uh, pricing tests do they perform when they pay for goods and services, if they've got that discipline, <clears throat> they also help the municipality from falling into hard times in the future. So a consistent regression of audit outcomes is an indication of a slippage in the controls whose final consequence could be to deliver a financial health risk. So the direct answer is the lesser you are effective in controlling your resources over time, the closer you get to bankruptcy. And I think if you look at many of the municipalities that we have analyzed in a number of those seven provinces, you know what has happened? Because they have not applied proper control, many of them, they run out of cash. And to pay for the things that they did last year, they tend to wait for the equitable share of this year. Remember, the equitable share of this year was ring-fenced for the things that must happen this year. Not to pay for things that you ought to have paid for last year, but because you had too much latitude to divert the money away from what was intended to something else. Then you are short. And that is the ultimate. When your controls are not in place, your financial health risk is going to accelerate you to a point where you are no longer even able to pay for your staff. It starts there. The minute you begin to find difficulty in paying for your staff, because you will discover that in previous years where you had to save the money, you never did. You broke every single internal control. You allowed for every contract to be signed up, but there was no rigor in managing the outflow of cash in order for you to survive rainy days. So I think that is really uh, one of the things that needs to be taken into account, that these controls are not just those mere procedures that the Auditor General often asks for. They have got an inherent risk of preventing a downward spiral when it comes to the financial fortunes if your environment is controlled properly. Because a properly controlled environment will know the extent of the cash flow needs that it has over the next six months. It will know the things that it wished it could procure, but decides to not procure them because they will put unnecessary pressure on their resources. That's what's the value of these uh, controls, and that's what sometimes they will result in if they are not properly observed. And what should be done to change this around, I think, uh, many We unfortunately, we unfortunately are losing a little bit of that feed there with the Auditor General Kimi Makwetu's uh, audit outcomes for the 2018-2019 financial year. We'll try to get back to that as soon as possible then as well. But do stay tuned. This is SABC News. Back after this.